proven that they are, you know, in a regulatory sense, still a long ways off. Oscar, do you have comments on that? Yeah, I have a couple of comments on that. First of all, um, there's, a, there's sort of a dilemma between SMRs and the large nuclear reactors, because when you're looking at uh, tripling the amount of supply, um, and that's obviously contingent on being serious about meeting your uh, 2050 targets, um, you're not going to do that with SMRs. You're going to do that with the large nuclear reactors because they're, they're less expensive on a per uh, kilowatt basis than, uh, than the uh, SMRs. So that's one comment. So the, the, um, the other comment I wanted to make is that uh, in the nuclear industry, and I have a lot of discussions with uh, Jim Berkeley on that, who's the chair of the uh, Nuclear Association, um, is that the nuclear industry, the engineering for nuclear reactors is a very time consuming process. And some of the errors that have been made in recent times have been to initiate construction on nuclear reactors before the engineering is completed. The, um, the problems that are that are being experienced on the Volga project in, in Georgia, uh, which has now led to a cost of $25 billion, uh, to horrendous. So just, it is so important to do the engineering and do it completely before you go to construction and construction is long. So the earliest that you could really bring in a nuclear reactor is probably 15 years plus at this stage. 15 years. 15, yes. That doesn't yeah. reach 20. Are you talking about like a full scale nuclear reactor or SMR? Well, both. Both. <laughs> 15 yeah. years. So they're so useless. There, there's still a lot of engineering to be done with the SMRs as well. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, if, if I can just sort of address that question as well, I mean, it, it is, a, 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 you know, a very new technology. We've learned a lot from those large nuclear reactors, um, but there's jurisdictions all around the globe that are looking into creating and making and designing these small modular reactors. My understanding is that Russia has, has made one design and that they've actually input it and put it on barges that they say that they have. Uh, so rather than having the small modular reactor and land, they've got it on a barge. And that in fact, that they've actually started construction and work on this. And so I think that we might be the 15 years, we might be able to use the technology and expertise from other areas to speed that up in our own areas. So I think it's very exciting and there's areas certainly down in the States in Idaho, there's a group down there. And again, it's been very expensive, billions of dollars, but they've learned a lot about how to create and, and make these modular facilities. So we're learning something all the time. So um, I think that's one of the, one of the, one of the beauties of living in Saskatchewan is that we can be phasing different things in uh, to achieve an ultimate goal of, uh, you know, as close to zero as we can get. But in the meantime, we can look at some of these other opportunities like geothermal, um, you know, maybe supplying heat that would, would directly start to reduce our carbon emissions. Zero and they, those could be done relatively problem. quickly because, you know, we already have the technology and we know the geology is sound. Okay, good. John, Thanks, John. Yeah, yeah. Uh, go ahead, John. I have a question for you too, John. Go ahead. Uh, just on that same uh, issue of time around SMRs, um, if you look to the United States, there were uh, two groups, uh, one, a new scale power, which mm -hmm. has uh, really moved towards a regulatory assessment of their designs, uh, a, a fair degree in the United States. And um, that size would be anywhere from uh, 45 to uh, multiple units up to, you know, 400 megawatts might be a size. I think a, a unit that has advanced that far, and it's, it's not a generation four, it's a generation three and a half, say. Um, 10 years is not unreasonable at all. And um, though all, all the issues that Oscar mentioned, the, uh, uh, the regulatory challenges, certainly the Canadian uh, nuclear uh, industry don't have a, you know, an SMR on the, uh, on the block right now to sell. So, uh, so there are, there are units available that are at the power scale that could be done 10, 12 years. I think. Okay. Uh, so John, this is for you too, cause uh, you were involved in the, uh, the focus groups and the, and you brought up the subject of, uh, power for Manitoba. 
and, and the public reaction to that. And the question is, couldn't hydro from uh, Manitoba offset the need for natural gas as a backup, as a renewable backup for, uh, for electricity production here? Uh, absolutely. It could be a resource uh, used for that, um, though the, um, the the choices that they make often are economic, say, versus technical when they get into, you know, an import situation. And it depends very much on how uh, Manitoba is prepared to sell a block of energy as well. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, here's what I just yeah. add a comment on that. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the uh, really attractive things about uh, hydro is that it complements wind and solar because it has low solar capability that is uh, certainly better than anything other than uh, maybe uh, natural gas turbines. They can blow solar as well, but not as well. So there's a real opportunity to use Manitoba hydro, hydro to increase the potential for increased uh, installation of wind and solar in Saskatchewan. To, uh, better interconnections. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, here's another uh, question. Um, there seems to be two streams of possibilities. One is a diverse mixture of, of zero emission, small scale technologies, uh, wind, solar, waste to energy, geothermal, etc. cetera. Uh, the other is nuclear. What factors should decide Saskatchewan's pathway? Nuclear is expensive and will take a great deal of time as we just uh, were talking about. We can start uh, the mixed approach now. So it's, I guess, the question of pathways going forward. And uh, anybody would like to take a crack at that? I don't think these uh, these pathways are mutually exclusive. Um, I think they're they're pathways that can be done in parallel. And the factors, uh, say, associated with nuclear, nuclear has struggled where. Uh, where they've gotten into uh, risk associated with construction uh, uh, pathways uh, that ended up being very expensive and economically risky. If they can, uh, I, th I think when we move forward, looking at nuclear, it has to be uh, driven by business. It has to be uh, driven by uh, avoiding risk. And that might mean uh, consortiums uh, that, that can eliminate the first of kind risk, which is typically the, the biggest risk you run into uh, because often they only build one or two of a, a particular kind of, of, of a nuclear reactor. 